Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Paula's Choice Daily Smoothing 5% AHA Treatment. And at first I want to go over some general information, then I want to share with you a frequency guide, some example skincare routines and lastly I want to go over the application so that you can see it visually when using this product at home. Now Paula's Choice has several exfoliating acids, one of them is their Daily Smoothing 5% AHA Treatment which contains 5% of glycogen colic acid which is an exfoliating acid in this case we're working with a leave-on exfoliant which means that when using it you have applied it you're going to leave it on the skin there's no need to wash it off and glycolic acid is mainly suitable if you have normal to dry skin this is also what they advise right here on the top and it is a lotion so it makes it even more suitable based on how it feels on the skin if you have a drier skin type and so when using it it can help you to loosen dead skin cells on the skin surface and this can help Help you to improve concerns such as like fine lines and wrinkles, dullness, textured skin or even sun damaged skin and overall like surface hyperpigmentation to even out your skin tone. And so when using it you need to make sure that you are going to adjust the frequency accordingly to your skin needs and basically concerns overall. And this can be of course like very individual for everyone. Now before you're jumping right into using it once or twice per day daily, my best advice would be start off by using it two to three times per week in your skincare routine, either in the morning or evening, uh, depending on what works best for you. And then make sure that you're going to increase the frequency over time, like in stages, so that you can see what frequency will work the best for you. If you can use it daily, once or twice per day after some time, go ahead and do so. So there's nothing wrong with it, but I do want to emphasize that depending on your skin and needs and how your skin is going to respond to your current frequency it may work well however it sometimes can also end up with sensitivity such as stinging or burning on the skin or even weird looking pimples which are like usually signs of that you are going to use it too often and your skin does not really need that much exfoliation and so then again you need to adjust it which can be in the very beginning but also over time if your skin is going to improve over time you may need to use it less often depending on your skin needs so always make sure to adjust it and since it is an exfoliating acid what you have to be aware of doesn't matter if you're using it in the morning and or evening you need to wear sunscreen during daytime when being exposed to the sun since it makes the skin sensitive to the sun so it doesn't matter if you're using it in your morning skin routine or evening skin routine if you're planning on being exposed to the sun during daytime please don't forget either moisturizer that already contains SPF or or regular sunscreen that's working well for your skin type and needs. So that's really important to emphasize when working with an exfoliating acid. And another point that I do want to emphasize is some example skincare routines because you can keep the routine very simple or you can keep it a bit more advanced which of course depends on uh, what your skin needs are and what you may have at home. And so if you want to keep the routine very simple then if you're planning on using it in your morning skincare routine you can go ahead start off by washing your face using a gentle and suitable cleanser for your skin type and needs. So in this case it should be adjusted to your normal to dry skin. Keep in mind, please use a gentle cleanser because we're already using an exfoliant in that same routine. Once you have washed your face with your cleanser, then apply the smoothing treatment onto the face, leave it on the skin, and then um, you can use a moisturizer in between that's working well for your skin type and needs, that's suitable for normal to dry skin, and then follow with a regular sunscreen when being exposed to the sun, or immediately just use a moisturizer that already contains SPF that's suitable for your skin needs, and at the same time protects the skin when being exposed to the sun. So you can adjust it depending on your skin needs and what you have at home. Now this would be one simple way on how you can do it during daytime, however in the evening it's basically the same just without sunscreen. So again go ahead and wash your face with a gentle cleanser for your skin type and needs. You may want to do a double cleanse using an oil or balm cleanser at first and then your regular cleanser afterwards which can help you to break down your sunscreen and or makeup which you have worn throughout the day a bit better from the skin so that everything comes off. Then after that again follow with the 5% AHA treatment, apply it, leave it on the skin and then follow with a moisturizer afterwards that's working well for your skin type and needs. So this is how simple you can keep it. You do not necessarily have to use like additional products in between. However, if you do have, for example, a toner and other serums and treatments and boosters maybe at home, then of course you can go ahead and adjust your skincare routine accordingly. So if it's again going to be your daily morning skincare routine, 
start off with a gentle cleanser to wash your face. If you have a hydrating and soothing toner at home, this would be the second step after cleansing. Apply that one on the skin, leave it on the skin. Then move on to the AHA treatment, apply it to the skin, leave it on the skin, and then follow with any zones, boosters, or other treatments which you may have at home, and then either with a moisturizer and then follow with sun protection or with a moisturizer that already contains SPF. So when it comes to other treatments, this can be hydrating zeoms, this can be, for example, anti-aging zeoms, such as, for example, peptides, this can also be a vitamin C, niacinamide, alpha-butin, whatever your skin concerns may be and you want to adjust it accordingly to it, you can use it. When it comes to the zeoms and treatments alone, from that like part in your skincare routine, layer it from the thinnest to the thickest texture. Now, when it comes to your evening skincare routine, then you can again keep it very similar just without the sun protection. So again, cleanser, toner, exfoliant, your zones, treatments, or even boosters, and then follow with your moisturizer afterwards. But when it comes to your evening skincare routine and you may have a retinol or retinoid at home that you're planning on using as well, then my best advice would be keeping them separate since it may lead to sensitivity. The same would apply to very strong vitamin C like zeoms or creams as well. However, in this case, if you want to keep the focus mainly on Paula's Choice, their 15% vitamin C booster shouldn't be an issue. However, if it's going up um, and you're going to use a vitamin C product more than 15 15%, then I recommend being careful with it as it can lead to stinging and burning because of the combination, not because of any conflicts. The same would apply to retinol and retinoids. So if you have, for example, one of the Paula's Choice retinols at home, they are pretty intense. So my best advice would be keeping them separate. Use one night your exfoliant, the other night your retinol, then again the next day your exfoliant. Or what you can do, since you can use that one during daytime as well, use your exfoliant in the morning and your retinol in in the evening. But again, you need to adjust the frequency accordingly to what's working well for you. When it comes to retinoid, which are uh, prescripted by your dermatologist, then please I recommend following the advice of your dermatologist. And then in this case, it's usually not advised to use them in the same routine with your exfoliant. So again, keep them separate. So this is mainly where I want to keep my focus on. If you want to download the um, example skincare routines and what to avoid, uh, and you want to go over it in your own time, I have everything down below in a description box so that you can download them and go over it in your own time when like setting up your own skincare routine. And so this would be it when it comes to the frequency, when you should use it, how you can set up a skincare routine, how simple you can keep it, how advanced you can keep it. And now I really want to keep my focus on the application so that you can see it visually. Now I want to get started with the first step, which is now washing the face with a gentle and suitable cleanser for its skin type and needs. Again, in this example, I'm really going to keep my focus on like normal to dry skin types. So always make sure that you're choosing products that are working well for your skin type and for your skin concerns so that you will end up with like um, improvements and you're not going to make it worse or that it may not feel comfortable on the skin. So that's really important to keep in mind. Always adjust it. So I have two examples right here. I have Cetaphil's Gentle Skin Cleanser or La Roche-Posay Tolerant Dermal Cleanser. Those are two both great examples. If you have a different gentle cleanser at home that's working well for you, go ahead and use that one. In this example, I'm going to use Cetaphil's Gentle Skin Cleanser. If you're going to use your cleanser, make sure to read on the back of the packaging on how you should use it. Usually with normal to dry skin uh, like cleansers, you can use some of them with water, whereas others say, well, it's best to do not use use it with water or that you can do both. So please make sure to always adjust it if you can apply it on dry on wet skin and how you have to take it off. And so in this specific case with Cetaphil's Gentle Skin Cleanser, it's basically up to me. I can use it with or without water. So I'm going to do the method with water because that's one that I personally prefer. And when using your cleanser, Make sure that it does not dry out your skin, nor irritates your skin in any way. And please make sure to read on the back if you can use it around the eyes or if you should avoid the eye area. If it does not mention anything at all about it, you can use it around the eye area. But if sensitivity occurs, please leave it out by next time. And if you're getting it into your eyes, please rinse it immediately with water. 
So I'm now going ahead and I'm going to apply Cita Fitz Gentle Skin Cleanser now on dry skin and then I'm going to rinse it off later on with water. Now when using your cleanser use about one to two pumps or about a coin size amount. Use it in the palm of your hand, massage your hands together and then gently apply it all over your face and neck using circular motions and massage it onto the skin for about 30 seconds to a minute. So, and once you have massage cleanser all over your face and neck, you now can go ahead and either remove it the dry way, if that's advised to do with a cloth or cotton pads or tissues, or you can either rinse it off with water, if that's also a method that you can do with your cleanser. Now, when rinsing it off with water, you use lukewarm water to warm water, and you can either just rinse it off by using your hands, or if you feel the need, you can use a fresh and soft washcloth in between, which can help you to remove the cleanser a bit better, which is a great method to do especially when trying to remove your sunscreen and makeup and make sure that everything comes properly off the skin. So now go ahead and take your fresh towel and pat the skin dry. So once you have washed your face, you have pat the skin dry, you now can immediately move on to the next step. So if you do not have a hydrating and soothing toner, you can skip that one and then immediately move on to the exfoliating acid and apply it to the skin. However, I do want to go over it step by step and I do want to include a hydrating and soothing toner. In this example, I'm using Paula's Choice Advanced Replenishing Toner, which is from the same line as the Daily Smoothing Treatment and it's suitable for normal to dry skin. If you have a toner at home that has a thinner texture, you can use it in the palm of your hand or with a cotton pad. In this case, it has a bit more of a thicker texture, which applies very easily with the palm of your hands. So usually if you're planning on using it with the palm of your hands and you can count the drops, use between five to eight drops. However, in this case, if your toner has a bit more of a thicker texture, then use less of it. Use between like two to four drops, more or less. This should be enough for your entire face and neck. Your face should feel slightly damp so that you can feel that you have applied it everywhere and that you haven't missed any area. However, your skin should not feel completely wet. So if it feels wet, use less the next time and the product should be able to absorb into the skin. And so in this case, I'm just going to use a couple of drops. I just went now with four drops. Have it in the palm of my hand, then I like to rub my hands together and then gently pat it or blend it all over your face and neck. Just make sure to not get it into your eyes. So, and once you have applied your toner all over your face and neck, then you're going to leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. If you want, you can give it 30 seconds to a minute in between so that the product is able to absorb into the skin before moving on to the next step. Now the next step after your toning step would be applying Paula's Choice Daily Smoothing 5% AHA treatment, which has a lotion-like texture. So when applying it, since it has a pump, use between two to three pumps for your face and neck. When applying it, please do not use it on top of your eyelids. Please do not get it into your eyes and be careful with the eye contour. Now, this means that if you know that you have a sensitive like eye contour in general, then please make sure that you're going to avoid it because the, sen the area is already a bit more sensitive and when working with like stronger products or exfoliating acid on a sensitive area, it sometimes can lead to irritation. So if that should be the case, avoid the eye contour. However, please again, make sure to not use it on top of your eyelids nor get it into your eyes. And so when using it, you can try out and see what works well best for you. Try it out at first with two pumps, see how this goes. If you feel the need of using a bit more, then add another pump to it so that you have a guide in 
in mind on how much you need to use. It is a lotion which spreads out very easily, it feels very hydrating on the skin, so you do not necessarily need to use a lot of product if you can evenly apply it all over your face and neck. As for me, I like to go with two pumps. If you feel like two pumps aren't enough, just add another pump to it. Use it between your fingers and then gently blend it all over your face as well as neck. So, and once you have applied it all over your face and neck, you're going to leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. Now the next step after you have applied your exfoliant could be already your moisturizer and or sunscreen, depending on when you're going to use it. However, if you have other serums and treatments at home, then this would be now the next step once you have applied the exfoliant. Now, if you have, for example, boosters or serums at home, or even like treatments that have a thicker texture, then you're going to layer it from the thinnest to the thickest texture. So if you have a serum with a dropper, then this would be at f like your first treatment that you're going to apply. And then if you have, for example, a serum with a thicker texture that has a lotion-like texture, then this would be the step afterwards. Now, usually if you're going to set up your skincare routine, going from the thinnest to the thickest texture, in this specific case, this wouldn't, this wouldn't really work because Paulette's Choice like exfoliating as a treatment is a lotion so it has a thicker texture as serums that come with a dropper but in this case it still is recommended to use it before you're going to apply your serums and treatments since it can help you to loosen the dead skin cells from the skin surface and this can help other skincare products penetrate better into the skin and therefore you still would use it before applying your serums and treatments even though the texture may be different. And so once you have applied your treatment, if you have serums and treatments or boosters at home, then this would be now the next step. Now, as an example, I have the Ordinary Niacinamide right here. This can work with one of the Potter's Choice boosters or one of their serums. So you can use them afterwards and layer them from the thinnest to the thickest. Now with Niacinamide, you're fine to use Niacinamide after exfoliating acids. There's no reason for concern. This do, they, like, they do not conflict. You can use them in the same routine. And this is just one example. If you have different skin concern and you have other treatments at home of course always always adjust it accordingly to your needs in this case it has a dropper this niacinamide has a thicker texture this is where i always advise using between two to three drops if you have a zoom at home that has a thinner texture like one of paula's choice boosters which usually have a thin texture then you would need to use more like about five drops or a couple of drops more to make sure that you have enough for your entire face and neck if you have a zoom that comes with um, like a pump, then use about one to two pumps or up to three to pumps, depending on the texture. And if you have a treatment that has like a creamier texture, like the Azlec Acid Booster, then use about a piece size amount so that you have a general idea of how much you're going to use when applying it. And then go ahead and apply it all over your face and neck, not using it on top of your eyelids and please do not get it into your eyes. And then once that you have applied your serums and treatments, then you're going to leave them on the skin. There's no need to wash them off. Now, please make sure to always read on the back of the packaging on how you're going to apply your specific treatment, since not every treatment can be used on the eye contour. On specific ones, they do mention, please avoid the eye contour. So if that's the case, then please, I recommend following that specific guide to make sure that no irritation occurs. Once you have applied your serums and treatments, the next step would be your moisturizer. And then after that, you would follow with sunscreen if you're going to do this during daytime and you're planning on being exposed to the sun. Or instead of using a usual moisturizer and separate sunscreen during daytime, you can immediately follow on with a moisturizer that already contains SPF. For example, Paula's Choice has basically just AM moisturizers that have already SPF in them, whereas their PM moisturizers do not have any SPF in them. So this would be a great example of how you can adjust your skincare routine. However, again, if you have them separate and use your moisturizer at first and then your sunscreen afterwards during daytime and your moisturizer in the evening is basically your last step in your skincare routine. Now, when it comes to the moisturizer, I have Paula's Choice Omega Plus Complex Moisturizer, which is great for normal to dry skin. This is, again, just an example. If you have a different one at home, then go ahead and use that one. Make sure that it's working well for your skin type and needs. 
Now in this case you can use about a few pumps. I prefer to keep it very thinly all over my face and neck when I'm using a moisturizer. So for me one to two pumps about a pea size amount more or less is enough for me. However if you have like really dry skin of course it's fine to use a bit more of it. Then go ahead and adjust the amount of product that you're going to use when applying your moisturizer. So I prefer to go with about two pumps more or less. Then I like to use it between my fingers and then gently applying it all over my face and neck. Now when applying those products, you're always going to layer them one after another. And in this case, since we're working with the leave-on exfoliant and with all the products that I just have applied except the cleanser, those are all products that you're going to leave on the skin. So there's no need to wash them off and you're going to layer one on top of the other. So, and once you have applied your moisturizer and this is going to be your evening skincare routine, then this would be now the last step. Again, please don't, don't forget to apply sunscreen during daytime when being exposed to the sun. Apply 10 to 15 minutes before sun exposure. Use about half a teaspoon for your face and neck, about one teaspoon for your face, neck and neck detach. You can actually go ahead and use a teaspoon as your guide if you're being new to it, to have an idea of how much sun protection you actually need so that you can properly apply it all over your face, neck and maybe decolletage to protect the skin not only to, uh, because you're working with an exfoliating acid but overall to protect the skin and premature aging or sun damaged skin in the future and so with this being said this is what i wanted to share with you i want to come up with an evening skincare routine this is where i usually prefer to use my exfoliating acids i like to keep them in my evening skincare routine and not so much during daytime and that that will be it this is how you can use Polar's choice daily smoothening 5% aha treatment which contains glycolic acid now again if you find the example skincare routines helpful with which i have shared now again, if you find those example skincare routines helpful, which I have shared with you earlier, you can download them in the description box down below. And if you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And if you now want to check out more skincare videos and see the application of them and what you have to keep in mind when working with them, I'm going to link some videos at the end of this video so that you can keep on watching. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skincaring. Bye.